let me show you how to create some cool borders to spice up your coin designs in Lightburn. I'll show you two different ways. First, we'll use basic Lightburn shapes, and then I'll show you my super top secret method for how to get uh, some more interesting looking shapes like the ones you see in this border up here uh, without having to design anything yourself or leave Lightburn at all. Let's get started. Let's start with creating a border from basic shapes. First thing I need to do is create a coin. So I'm going to draw a circle and I will change the width and the height to 40 millimeters because I do a lot of 40 millimeter coins and that'll work fine for our example. And that's gonna represent the outer bounds of our coin. Next, I need to create an offset to the inside to um, give us a little bit of margin because I don't want my border to run into the edge of my coin. That's just gonna look goofy. So I'm gonna come up to tools, offset shapes, and for the coins that I use, a 1.5 offset matches up perfectly to the coin face. So I'm going to click okay. And now this interior line here, this is gonna be the outside edge of my border. Next step, what I like to do is create another offset which is going to give me the distance of my the overall width of my border this is going to be up to you you can do a big border you can do a thinner one i like to start with 2.5 as my border my outside border so i'm going to select that shape offset shapes and change the distance to 2.5 and now you see this line here in the middle is our uh, the outside bounds of our border and this one here is the inside bounds of our border. Next, we get to choose a basic shape to use as our repeating pattern. I'm just gonna go with a really basic thin rectangle. So I'm gonna come over here to the toolbar, select the square, and then draw a really thin rectangle. It doesn't matter the size right now. And at this point, I could use this shape just as is, but I'm gonna spice it up a little bit by rounding the corners completely so it makes a nice little pill shape. To do that, I'm gonna select it, hold down control, and then drag to the left, which is gonna completely round my corners. Next, we're gonna place our shape inside of our coin border here. And I'm just going to scale it manually here by dragging. You could go edge to edge, but I like to leave a little bit of a buffer so you can see it's not exactly touching the line here or here. If you wanted to make this perfectly placed in the center, you can. I just kind of eyeball it. When you're working with coins, it's so small anyway, you can't really tell. Now it's time to make our border. So I'm going to select my shape by clicking on it hold down shift, select the bottom circle, come up to arrange, and then click on circular array. Now you can see it just distributed that line, that shape all the way across our coin here. As far as the settings here go, you want start to be at zero, end to be at 360, and then the copies this is gonna determine how densely you want them packed. So if you have a lower number, it's gonna separate them further away, and a higher number, it's gonna pull them closer together. This is completely up to you. So let's just go with 200. I'm gonna click OK. And now once you zoom out, you can see that you have a nice repeating pattern border based off of a really basic shape that took us about two minutes to figure out. Now let me show you my method for finding some more interesting shapes without having to do a lot of work. So I will clear this out here. And first thing I'm gonna do is bring up my text tool. So I'm gonna go over here to the create text button and then I'm gonna click anywhere on the screen, it doesn't matter. And now what I'll do is I'll just start adding punctuation, just random punctuation like uh, the apostrophe, the tilde, exclamation point, uh, the carrot, anything really, the asterisk. And what I'll do is I will select all of them here and then I'll just start sorting through my, my fonts up at the top here. And some fonts have really interesting character designs. And you can find some really cool things. You just have to picture it in your head, like, wow, that would look cool as a repeating 
pattern. And I found, uh, especially the tilde uh, marking, you'll find a lot of really interesting ones for that. But what I'll do is I'll just kind of sort through here, like the asterisk, like that, that Bodini asterisk over here. That looks really cool, actually. I might use that as a repeating pattern over here. But a really basic place to start is just using Arial. One of my favorite is the uh, the apostrophe in Arial. So I will, even that looks great. I would use that. But uh, we'll, we'll go with the Arial one. So I'll click on Arial and you can see the apostrophe has this kind of like tapered rectangle shape. I, I, call, it a, I call it a zipper pattern. And I use this all the time for my coins. So what you're gonna to wanna to do when you find one that you like is to right click on it and click convert to path. And that's gonna convert it from a text item, a text property into a vector path. And now I'm going to drag this thing back up to uh, my border here. I'm gonna size it to your preference click on the shape, hold down shift, click on the circle, arrange, circular array. And see this one is overlapping, so I have to space these out a little bit more. Well, let's just say, uh, we'll go with an even 100. Click okay. And now you have a really, really cool uh, zipper tooth style border around your coin. I'll finish up the video by showing you an example of a triple decker border that I just made for a coin that I'm working on today. So starting at the top here, we have the uh, zipper tooth pattern that we just created. I used the same exact thing here as my larger border. I made another offset sandwich here. So I have a smaller border on the inside where I just have some repeating circles. And then there is actually one more here. It's a little bit smaller. So you can see this kind of, this uh, sawtooth edge here. This area here is just another uh, repeating, repeating border pattern that I stacked on top and just gives you a nice texture to your coin design here. So let's run this file and see what our coin border actually looks like. As always, thanks for watching. And if you want to engrave coins like this and you're not sure where to start, I have a beginner's crash course on how to use a fiber laser in Lightburn. It's called Fiber Laser Ignite. And you can find a link in the video description below. I'll catch you next time.